My colleague Chris Dott and myself over started to do a research program that addresses the broad question of how firms do business. And that is the business model. The business model is really a system of activities that are um, interdependent and that create value for the stakeholders of the firm. Let me give you an example. Apple. So Apple, in the old days, uh, you know, produced the, designed the hardware, produced some of the hardware, or assembled some of the hardware, and then sold that hardware, and the value creation was through the sale of hardware. Enter the iPod. That was a profound change in the business model of Apple because Apple realized that they can create value for the stakeholders by not just selling a gadget, which is nicely designed, but also create value through the use of the gadget. So Apple, in introducing the, I the iPod, profoundly changed its business model by having a relationship with the music industry, the owners of the intellectual property to the various songs, convincing those studios to sell by the song, not by the CD, and then through an electronic store, iTunes, enabled people to download selected music, and every time a, a song was downloaded, Apple got a share of the uh, proceeds, and therefore the uh, stakeholders of Apple, namely the customer, it created value for the customer, created value for the shareholders, the owners of Apple, and obviously for the employees of Apple. So the business model, once again, engage, it is a description of how the firm does business, and it is a system of activities. And when they introduced the iPod, new activities were added, and the, and, and the value that was created by this modified business model it was enhanced because there were new stakeholders. Note that the stakeholders um, are, they, they span both firm and industry boundaries. Who would think that the computer company would be in the music business? And suddenly Apple was literally in the music business. So, so over the years, uh, Chris Dott, who is now at Ayesta Business School in Barcelona, Spain, and I, have addressed a number of issues that relate to the business model. For example, what are the elements of a business model? What, is the, what are activities that describe the content? What is the structure? How are those activities combined to create a system? And as importantly, the governance of the business model. Who carries out each activity? We ask the question, how does the business model create value? What are the fundamental value drivers in the business model. And that's where we create, created the so-called nice business model. And we asked managers to ask themselves, is our business model nice? Nice stands for novelty, lock-in, complementarity, and efficiency. And these are the fundamental uh, value drivers. What I'd like to talk about today is another aspect of the business model, and that is the process by which companies go through the design of the business model. And much of the work that has been done so far focused on the content of what is a business model, or how does the business model create value, and so on. But very little work has been done on how organizations design the business model. How do they modify the business model? And this applies, by the way, to early stage organizations, you know, new startups and to establish organizations. You know, we thought about, well, if you think about what do managers do, obviously they have to come up, among other things, they have to lead the organization and develop the strategy. How are they going to compete? The business model answers a different question. How are we going to do business? So that's the essence of our research program. And what I hope to be able to share uh, today is the result of a study on the process of developing a business model. What our research on the process of designing a business model established is that by building on a methodology that was adopted for the purpose of product design by 
IDEO, which is a leading design company in uh, the Bay Area uh, in, uh, on the West Coast, uh, in applying it to the design of the business model, we developed a five-phase process that is embedded in the understanding of the antecedent for the design of the business model. So the, some of the work we have done has established that when a company designs its business model, it doesn't do it in, in a vacuum. It doesn't do it. It, it has to do it um, in, in, by considering a number of antecedents. For example, what is the goal of the business model? That's one antecedent. What are some of the templates that other companies have been using and to some extent thoughtfully and mindfully adopting some of these templates? That's another antecedent. Understanding who are the stakeholders of the organization that would benefit from that business model. And obviously looking at constraints, whether these are financial constraints, human capital constraints, regulatory constraints, or any other set of constraints that would affect what the firm can and cannot do uh, for any one of these reasons I just mentioned. So once these antecedents are acknowledged and communicated, then there is a process that we suggest in that research paper that involves five steps. First, to observe, to, to, to look, to do a little bit of an ethnographic study, how people use your product or your service. What, what do they like? What don't they like? When do they use it? How do they use it? Who uses it? And so forth, to make the dying decision, how the buying decision is made. So lots of observation is involved. Then there's a period, a phase of synthesis, taking all this information that you observe, trying to pull it together. Then there is a point of taking this information and generating some prototype business model, saying this is one idea of how we do business, here's another idea of how we do business, and let's compare them and therefore and, and refine them as we think about it more rigorously and more def definitely. And then the last phase in this process would be implementation. And that observation cycle, you know, observation, synthesis, um, a generation, refinement, and implementation should be an ongoing process. It's not a static process. It's a dynamic process. Which, which the firm should never sit still and say, this is how we do business and we work in silos. Our, our main observation here is the need for people in the organization to think in a holistic way, not to think in the silos, to take a broader view of the organization, not just of the activity they are involved in. And that, we believe, based on the research that we have done, will create value for all the stakeholders. In fact, this process paper is an attempt to generalize our past research that focused on young emerging companies. And this was our attempt to move from focusing and empirically examining young emerging growth companies to establishing, to, to focusing on multi-business, large, global, diversified companies. What I'd like to do is give you two examples. What are the implications of not adopting a process of continuously updating and revising your business model? Look at a company like BlackBerry. BlackBerry dominated the smartphone industry in government, in business, and among consumers. Everybody, BlackBerry almost became a verb in American uh, society. Uh, even the President of the United States used the BlackBerry. And uh, BlackBerry stuck to a particular way of doing business and ignored the changes that are happening in telecommunication, in the ability of wireless network to transmit videos and, and uh, other graphical information. And they have not adopted the business model. And today, BlackBerry is in a ver uh, in, certainly in decline and, according to some, on the verge of bankruptcy. Another example of a company that had not adopted its business model is Nokia. That, at one point, was by far the largest market shareholder in terms of handset for wireless communication. 
Today, they uh, dispose of their uh, handset business and, and decline to a very small percentage of the number uh, of the global number of handsets that are being sold. They've been taken over by the likes of Samsung and Apple, uh, HTC and others. Going to uh, give you a concrete example of a company that totally transformed itself by transforming a bu its business model is IBM. IBM historically was a product-centric company. They sold computers, they sold disk drives, they sold tape drives, they sold a number of boxes. Today, the vast majority of IBM revenue comes from services, where the products are a means to an end, are a means to deliver the service. That's a profound transformation of how IBM does business. Today, the most profitable part of the company are not the boxes, are the services. The largest fraction of the revenue of IBM comes from services, not from the boxes. So IBM is a good example of a global, multinational, a large, diversified firm who has undertaken a profound updating or revision of its historical business model and as, su and as such enabled it to stay on top. We believe, based on the review that we have done, uh, that we are the first one to focus exclusively on the process of business model innovation. There has been a realization that business model innovation matters, but before we did this study, no one has really rigorously looked at the process of how you innovate your business model. And that's where we believe our main contribution lies. I think the main, there are two main takeaways that I think we should pay close attention to. First, the need to apply design thinking to the design of the business model. Traditionally, design thinking has been applied to the design of products. And what we have established through this research uh, project that the process by which firms design the business model can in and of itself create enormous value. That's the first thing. And the second takeaway that I think is important to, to um, understand and internalize is that, that firms need to develop a capability to continuously ask themselves how to tweak our business model, how to refine our business model, how to revise. So this is an organizational capability that needs to become part of the DNA of the firm. So the business model needs to change as the environment in which the firm competes in changes. And if it is, if it, there is a realization in the organization that each and every one member of the organization needs to look at, are we still doing business in a way that maximizes the value creation potential? And the answer, therefore, is that Designing the business model is no longer just a job that the CEO has to do. Each and every member has to ask themselves, is the activity that I'm involved in, is another way to do this activity? How does the activity that I'm involved in relate to other activities that are going on in our firm that create value for our stakeholders? And when I talk about stakeholders, they are obviously the customers of the firm, they are the partners of the firm, they are the owners of the firm, and the employees and managers of the firm to pick a few stakeholders. And all of them need to be considered in thinking through the design of the business model. So these are the two main takeaways. A, again, design doesn't just apply to product design, it applies very much to design of how firms do business. And secondly, the point that this has to be a continuous activity that becomes part of the DNA of the firm. On one hand, the impact of the design of the business model on the performance of the firm has been substantial, greater than what I would have anticipated ex ante. But what surprised me most is how rare are the organizations that we surveyed and talked to 
where the design of the, the process of designing the, the business model is part of the DNA of the firm. You know, very few organizations routinely think, how can we tweak our business model? How can we find a better, more efficient, greater value-creating business model? And, and, and that surprised me, and, 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 and I think that managers and organizations more generally would benefit by thinking deeper about the design and thinking about it not at the one time, you know, once in two years thinking is, is a better way, but as an ongoing, if you will, dynamic capability that the firm has. And it's up to the leadership of the company to instill that kind of design thinking into the DNA of the firm. And the fact that this is rare was a surprise to me. In our view, the perception is that innovation is about product innovation. And what our study attempts to show that innovation is not limited to the innovation of product. That innovation of the very way a company engages in business, how it interacts with its stakeholders, who, how are the various activities connected to each other, who carries out each of the activities. Because in business models in today's environment where there have been enormous advantages in information and communication technologies, the business model of companies involves activities that are carried out by other companies. And that's very much part of the business model of how a modern corporation operates today. And I can give you lots of examples how the, various, the business model of uh, Amazon uh, relies on UPS delivering the, delivering the, the um, product that people buy from Amazon. And most of the product that Amazon sells, Amazon doesn't produce or stock, it's just drop shipped from another company. So the business model of Amazon involves companies, involves activities that are happening outside of the boundaries of Amazon. In fact, outside of the industry that Amazon is in. So I think the innovation that in, is inherent in the Amazon business model, or, or I can give you other companies, E-Trade business model, or, or, or several others, is the realization that there is a lot of innovation that can happen on, in the way companies do business. And in fact, the, there are companies where the entire innovation is how they do business. Take Priceline. Priceline is revolutionized travel. Rather than you uh, going to the website of any airline and, and, and looking at the menu of what they have to offer you, it's just the opposite. You sit there and say, I want to travel from A to B, and I'm willing to pay X dollars to travel from A to B, and you, Ellen, make, him, make me an offer. And, and that's, a, that's a reverse, um, you know, if you, if you think about it, it, it's kind of a reverse auction in some sense. Uh, but in many ways, it, it's a way to create value. For the airline to dispose of seats they haven't sold, because if you fly an empty seat, you make no money, you might as well make some money. And, and so everybody wins. All this is a value-creating uh, business model, and there's no product there. eBay, there's no product, right? They just, the business model is where the value creation is. So, so I think that that's the major uh, phenomena that we want to communicate, that innovation is not just about product. It's about business models as well, and about the process of developing that business model, and that enormous value for the stakeholders is created through the business model innovation. What we are uh, engaged in now is a fairly massive effort of collecting data and addressing a related question, and, uh, and that is focusing on large companies and how the business model evolve side by side with the organization, the people, the incentives. And that's because the business model focuses kind of on what activities the firm is engaged in in order to create value and how that system of activities create value, how it's connected, who does it. But there are other elements of the organizations that need to be looked at, and that's how we see ourselves in the next phase of this 
uh, research program, which, as I said, we started over 15 years ago.